views and opinions expressed by callers, guests, and hosts do not necessarily reflect those of the Black Talk Radio Network and Black Talk Media Project. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. We slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing cake. Say the U.S. wants to avoid at all costs. We slicing. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold. Welcome, welcome everyone to Tando Radio Show, brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. I'm your host, Dave from L.A., coming to you live from FEMA Region Number 6. On this day, October October the 16th, 2017, we have a live show for you on this Monday. And if you'd like to get in on the conversation at any time, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. And the name of today's show, I'm going to take a little bit from the good music that, we, that I was hearing just before we started. In a New World to Rule is going to be today's show, In a New World to Rule. Uh, where will you be? So very, very important. I think that that is going to be today's show. I'm looking forward to that. And at any time you'd like to get in on a conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025, then hit star, star. So let's get into some administrative things before we kick off on today's show. Everyone, please continue to support Black Talk Radio Network because it is necessary that we have this outlet for us to strategize realize and for us to conceptually put things together that will be in our best interest moving forward. So very, very important. So just want to ensure that we have Black Talk Radio Network in the future. So you can do that by giving some of your donations or your give some of your excuse me give some of your energy to the network financial energy to the network and your financial energy is your overall compensation for labor that you get paid. Give that some to your uh, Black Talk Radio Network by way of donations to ensure that this network is where it is and going even further and growing. And you can do that by going to www.blacktalkradionetwork.com, www.blacktalkradionetwork.com. And once you're there, on the website, on the, on the homepage, you will see the donation prompt. There's going to be a couple of donation prompts that are there. There's going to be one for uh, Black Talk Radio Network. Hit that one. There's going to be one for my man, Michael Emanuel. Hit that one. And there's also going to be one for uh, BTR Community. Well, that is a membership, a little bit different. So this is what uh, the Black Talk Radio Network donation and BTR Community, uh, B, excuse me, BTR, the social media known as BTR community is where you can support this network to make sure that it stays on air. And it's right there. Just hit the prompt and it will lead you through the black talk, the social media outlet known as BTR community was put together for you engage into so that you can engage in all of your social media activities without being as adversely affected. And so what you can do, you'll see the capital B uh, that's there with the black background and just hit that and then that will make you a member uh, or, or that will take you into the prompt to become a member. Membership is only $24 a year and that is a one-time $24 a year 
uh, membership. So make sure that you all engage in that. It's the only place that I post, and the reason being is because I don't like to be adversely affected. Facebook is not free. Twitter is not free. And what's being compromised there is much, much more than what we should be giving up. And not only that, you don't have to worry about here at BTR Community with Black Talk Radio Network. You don't have to worry about your identity being sold to anyone. So you being a listener, make sure that you feed the roots um, and not eat just the fruit. So very, very important. Yeah, you've heard that before. Let's do it. Let's ensure and give our, ourselves an opportunity at doing all the things that we need to do and doing it together with each other for just that sole purpose. Okay. So with that being said, also, let me think uh, that would be it. Oh, no. If you would like to acquire... Real money, you can do that by going to Prosperity Mint, www.prosperitymint, P R O S P E R I T Y M I N T dot com, Prosperity Mint. And once you're there, check out what's in inventory and definitely engage in that because the overall real money, even though you're paid in currency or, or a, a debt instrument, which is the, the wage of a slave. The wage of a king and a queen, that's what they're paid, is gold. The wage of a lady and a gentleman is silver. Make sure that you're able to engage in that. So very, very important that you, if, if you're not paid that, that at least you save yourself and your finances and your energy with that because that is the great creator's real money. I want you to be able to engage in that, okay? So definitely do that there. Okay, so now, with that being said, if you like to get into the cryptocurrencies as far as trading the cryptocurrencies, you can do that by going to rcryptocurrency.com, rcryptocurrency.com, and you can trade within the Trade Coin uh, Club uh, format with us. And also, there uh, for those of you that are, are going to be getting into the crowdsourcing and crowdfunding, um, as soon as that is available, I will definitely let you know. For those of you that missed the weekend conference call, you could easily go uh, text, text me at 951-790-8330, and I will forward to you the overall conference call recording so you can hear uh, what, was, what was discussed uh, in that conference call for the uh, crowdfunding or crowdsourcing uh, opportunity that is there. So definitely looking forward to that with you all. Okay? Now, so let's get into what's in the news. Had it was a little busy today, so I wasn't able to post uh, what's in the news. So uh, I didn't have uh, anything that was there, but there's plenty of stuff that is happening, and we're going to jump right into some of the things that's going on in the world and what's in the news. Big ups to uh, my man, L.A. Ramon. I love you, your icon. I see my, my sister, Strategic Melon, and my man, Jerry, is there in queue. Um, I don't see my man, Brother Bragg. As I say, I don't see my man, Brother Braggs. There he is. My brother, Brother Braggs, is in queue. My man, Raj, is there. Um, what up, Monster? And um, Strategic Melon, and my sister, what's going on? So just want to say what's up to everyone that's in the chat room uh, that's there. And if you have any questions or comments, definitely would uh, make it. Yes, I know, we do uh, make it. So uh, just hit me up, and we'll definitely do that. We will definitely chat uh, because we have to, we have to, we have to. So want to say I greatly appreciate and forgive me for not having uh, some things for what's in the news and everything. I've been getting up early and getting to bed early and working nonstop in between. So today was, uh, as the past couple, has it been crazy, 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 busy, but hey. That's what we do, and definitely, definitely uh, looking forward to it all. So let's get into – I didn't post anything there. So uh, it's so much that is there uh, going on, and so I'm going to just jump into – let me start where I want to start. Uh, some of the things that are, are, are within the news, uh, Gotcha Big Garage, I received. Thank you. And let me just 
jump off a couple of things, that, and I'm doing this some, somewhat from memory as well. But if you'd like to get in on the conversation at any time, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Now, there's some major news going on uh, in the world. And uh, so some, from some of, the, uh, some of the publication, I want to say big ups to my man Kevin, um, that uh, good, good friend of mine. Uh, Kevin sent me an article from the Huffington Post. And uh, it says non-dollar trading is killing the petrodollar and the foundation of the U.S. Saudi policy in the Middle East. Yes, that is definitely, definitely happening. Um, and the ramifications of that, and, I, and this is why I wanted to say that today's show is if uh, the new world, in the new world, who will rule the new world and where will you be? Because it's definitely uh, coming to that, and that that is a critical, critical thing that's a part of it there. So that was one of the things from the Huffington Post that that was in the news. Check out that one. Then uh, also there is let me pull up a couple of other things that I have that I meant to push uh, put into, but I just didn't have it. Uh, what was this one? Oh, here we go. Next one. You know, there's a lot of, and this one comes from Business Insider, the monster nuclear submarine the U.S. sent to, to South Korea looks like it might be packed with Navy SEALs, meaning a decap decapitation program uh, may be trying to, to, to be pushed off, and this came from Business Insider. And um, so the, the military staging of assets are being rapidly deployed uh, in that region. And while you look there, something somewhere else may uh, pop off. But let's take a look at this real quick. The headline, the, the monster nuclear submarine the U.S. sent to, the, to South Korea looks like it might be packed with Navy SEALs. The U.S. Navy maintains that the USS Michigan, a submarine known for carrying special ops teams, stopped in South Korea as a part of a routine port visit. But pictures of the event suggest a more clandestine purpose might be involved with the U.S. Navy SEALs. So check out uh, that as an article that uh, you may want to, to be interested in. And while we're there, uh, just some of the things that's going on that I found in, in going on with, um, in that situation with North Korea. Um, North Korea has actually started to deploy some of its missiles uh, around the country, um, and they are said to be aimed towards the west coast of the U.S. or pointed towards the U.S. and at different degrees and at different angles. Some are, are, are pointed in the angle in which um, it would be a, a kind of a, a lower trajectory, um, and some are pointed straight up because they would go into the upper atmosphere and, and then come down. Um, but there are, some are saying that North Korea possibly, uh, their, their ICBMs possibly can't go uh, into the upper atmosphere or in the stratosphere and then make re-entry into uh, our atmosphere because they'll burn up. Well, they said that they didn't have nuclear capabilities, so... Don't you believe them? So they're staging uh, themselves, and, and, and I guess there was the actual where, one second, there was actually uh, a report where North Korea said that they, um, they may have a preemptive strike on the, on the, uh, on the U.S., and this was um, from their actual media official governmental media outlet where it says North Korea announced uh, as a tent to attack with missiles so they may just go ahead and have a preemptive strike who knows possibly wouldn't wouldn't be surprised or however things would shape out that that's what they will tell you but how how close to the truth would that be well you know it's not the truth because they're speaking it so 
So that is one of the things. And then also uh, over the weekend, uh, the, the, the celebrity figurehead Secretary of Defense was on Cerebrally Na- Naive Network and uh, basically said um, that the, the U.S. will will continue, was on uh, Cerebrally Naive Network. U.S. is going to com- continue diplomatic efforts with North Korea until the first bomb drops, meaning... They plan on doing it, and it's, everything is, is kind of starting to shape itself up. And, and, and in the meantime, uh, other things are, are shaping up around the world to facilitate and to, to actually foster that. And I think that this war is definitely, definitely going to, and I've always said this, for those of you that have been listening to Tando Radio for a while, you know that I said that uh, this is the purge. The rest of the world will purge themselves of the U.S., and I think that this is going to be the actual linchpin in which which that may happen because the rest of the world is not going to want to lose their positioning and the momentum that they're gaining by the non-dollar denominated petrodollar and the reserve currency losing its position it actually from the business standpoint it would be beneficial for the u.s i mean for the rest of the world to to actually uh, move away from and align itself with those that are, are actually in direct confrontation with the U.S. And we're, st- we're going to see that divergence uh, definitely play itself out in a major, major way. And so I know that the, the U.S. is completely confident through arrogance that they will continue to be what they've been before in the past. But if you look at the overall truth of the situations and the intimate change that's here, that is going to speak in the opposite and to foster a different uh, direction, which is all still under the same control. So I think the U.S. will lose its overall position. It will lose support because all of the support is moving towards its those that it will be in confrontation. Basically, the U.S. will have to go it alone. I've always said that the world will isolate itself and they will bring up charges against the U.S. and they will convict it in the overall uh court of, of global appeal opinion and that's where the u.s will lose all of its allies who will stay none to be named so check out uh, well there is no article from that that's just me um uh, seeing that and uh, we'll have some things maybe to to talk just about that so definitely what up dj my man dj i uh, just hit me up um so we'll we'll see you in a little while, my friend. All right. So let me uh, hurry, continue on what's in the news. And at any time, if you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. I'll jump back in the chat here. Uh, and let me check out with uh, a couple of some news stories. My man, L.A. Ramon, um, have posted some, some good stories. So let me just move this move this down. And I, I was outside of, um, let me check out some of the things that uh, my man Ramon has, uh, from most L.A. Ramon. Uh, Ramon posted from um, uh, BCC. And it says, move this down. Let me pull this up real quick and grab this one. Okay, here it is. It says uh, L.A. Ramon po- posted something. Mm, this one comes from, I see this one. It says um, the, the FASTA uh, reauthorization is from Cerebrally Naive Network. Um, and, and Israel had uh, tried to apply for reparations for 9 million uh, Jews that were black and Germans told them to kick rocks. Yeah. Yeah, this is is a lot of that. L.A. Ramon has posted a couple of good articles. I'm going to post these inside of uh, once I get everything organized for today. And I, I sorry I did, wasn't able to do that. Just been crazy, crazy busy, as you all know, some of the things that we're working on as to why. So, okay, so let's jump back into some other things that's what's in the news, and then we'll get to uh, the show and the topics at hand. So next thing of um, significance is that, uh, you know, there in, in Can- Catalonia, uh, the, the Spain- Spanish government is threatening to totally uh, to, to bring uh, forceful actions against the, uh, 
the popular, uh, the populace in in Cant- Catalonia that have has voted to uh, to leave leave Spain, and also threatening to arrest the police, the popular police chief, the uh, the political uh, figurehead for trying to leave Spain. And I'm gonna tell you, these these things may seem like they're small, but this is how world wars get started by an, a psyops in a, in a, in coverted moves. So. This is something that definitely uh, should be on your radar because your children uh, and your daughters may, you know, overall physical outcome or disposition will be dependent upon this because I definitely can see where this will move into destabilizing Europe by way of, of, of civil war. Then there will be uh, uh, other aggressive acts by other countries to, to seize on that opportunity. And, and lo and behold, before you know it, you got a world war that's jumping off all of the indicators and all of the necessary moves on the board of control are being set out. So definitely be aware of that. Next uh, one that wanted to make mention to uh, was that the major financial thing is that uh, looks like the Fed is, is, is going to unwind its portfolio. Um, beginning in the uh, at the end of this month so overall market turbulence could be i mean that's going that could be on October the 27th the US Federal Reserve begins to unwind 4.5 trillion 4.5 t 4.5 capital t in holding junk real estate loans bonds uh, stocks they bought since 2008 to prop up the economy in Wall Street, uh, 600 uh, billion a year, complete uh, in completely junk junk market is uh, excuse me in uh, 600 billion of complete junk is about to enter the market. Deutsche Bank is like how much would you like because they're gonna they're gonna want to drop it so. Uh, the the rally is going. They're actually saying that this may start in October the 27th of 2017, which is a uh, two ten days, eleven days from now. And this could be the unwinding. And believe me, that could woo, when it goes off. When it goes off, that is going to be a. We got to see how that falls out. That could be the overall. There you go. There's no rebounding from that. So that's major, major, major. Um, and we've been, been trying to tell you that, that this is going to be happening and some of the things that you should be looking out for um, and preparing for and positioning yourself um, in accordance to that. You have to have to uh, put yourself and your family in a real position of advantage. And also in the news, the IMF, um, my man Kevin sent me this one as well, and this one comes from Press TV, in which is Iranian publication. IMF unfazed by Trump's threat over the Iran plans because they wanted to kill the uh, agreement. Uh, they they kill, killing the, the 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 agreement with Europe over climate control, killing the agreement with uh, with Iran on its its nukes and everything else. So what does that do? That moves everything up in the overall military confrontation engagement, and that is definitely, in my opinion, what's being played out. Now, you see how the IMF is un- – you see what's happening? is just what we said, um, you know, when we first started these shows, that you're going to see the whole world starting to pull against the U.S. because that's how the system keeps control. Let me just read this real quick. IMF chief, internationally – boop, boop. Chief Christine Lagarde has been quoted by media as saying that the funds would pr- uh, proceed with its regular Iran policy like it would do with any other s- member state. And I'm going to tell you, I do see Iran, Germany, and France being a part of BRIC nations really soon. We see no reason to change anything about the guidelines that have we received from the IMF board and continue to operate in the same manner. Lagarde said in response to a question about the fund's approach towards Iran following a recent call by celebrity figurehead President U.S. Donald Trump on the IMF and World Banks to provide loans or funds to Iran. We operate with 189 members 
and we only provide support and and enter into program negotiation when a country asks for it. Lagarde says. Lagarde remarks uh, followed earlier reports that Trump had ordered U.S. executive directors at the IMF and other multilateral development banks to vote against extending loans to fund Iran. Do you see what's going on here? This is why the IMF head quarters is going to be leaving Washington, D.C., and it will no longer be a city-state, and it's going to move to Beijing. Of course, the U.S. told them, don't fund them anymore. And what did they say? Okay, we're not going to fund you. We're going to fund them. One second. Uh, one, one second, everyone, one second. Sorry about that. Didn't mean to leave dark uh, dead air, but I had to take that call. Some calls you have to take. So um, what's happening here, everyone, is what we've been talking about. The whole world is moving against the U.S. And what's going to happen? There's going to be a military outlash and backlash that is going to happen from that. And believe me, the U.S. is going to lose. Very, very critical, very, very important. And you have to be positioned correctly so that will not as adversely affect you and your family because that's huge, completely, completely huge. So that's where uh, we are. That's some of the things that's within the news. And then so we're going to jump into today's show. In today's show, a new rule. A new ruler in the world, where will you be? As, excuse me, as the, as the new rules claim, heck on it, what was it? I forgot, something about a, a, a new rules in the world. The new rules of the world, where will you be? That's it. The new rules of the world, where will you be? And the reason why I wanted to name the show that is because there are old rules that are going to be reinvoked. And we want you to be ahead of that. We want you to be ahead of that because I don't want you to be adversely affected by it. And they are major, major, major pieces. So that's what's in the news. So what, we, what I want to do is a couple of things that I, I want to get into. Oh, I forgot about this one. Let me, it was a couple of other ones. Let me pull these up. These very, very important um, articles. Uh, there was an article. Where did that one, um, where did I put that one? There it is. Um, article, this one, here it is. This one comes from, uh, let me pull this up. It was a little earlier uh, towards the uh, end of summer. And this one comes from the Cleve, from Cleveland.com. And this was from September of two, uh, September 5th of 2017. So it was roughly about a month and some, some days ago. But here's what's so important. It says, Texas judge rules against new overtime rule, but Trump may still impose his own. And this is going to be one of the headlines of today's show, and we're going to uh, read into that. Very, very important. What is really being said? What is going to, what is going to happen? Why would, this, why would this be relevant? What's really going on here? We're going to check this out and in my, get my opinions. I would love to hear from you what that means and what, what, the, what it is really saying. And I'm going to tell you, in my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, the overall complete re, redistricting, re, have a redistricting of the United States that is going to be very, very, very effective. And then um, yeah, I'm back here on the uh, Facebook on the um, on the page, my man. I think L.A. Ramon. Yeah, this is L.A. Ramon. He said, "Dave, this is a good article. This article is good for you, Dave." And it says, "Town Hall." Let me see what it says. It says, "Okay, let me pull this one up real quick. I want to read this one. There it is. Okay, growing threats, weakened forces." A hard look at the U.S. military. 
yes, that that is definitely um, one I will definitely looking at. And then there was also one from M. UK Investing, stock market strategies and uh, implore uh, explore joint joins the Maui Gold Rush. But yes, there's a definitely uh, uh, in Mali there's a, a, a um, definitely a gold rush that's going on, and there's, there's a bunch of gold rushing that's being played throughout the world because um, gold is going to be very very significant in the war that uh, is definitely going to be uh, perpetuated. So definitely need to, to to look at that. So. All right, so what we're going to do real quickly, I want to um, check out this article, but if you want to j- jump in, give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. I really want you to get prepared for what's happening, both have the, the proper mindset, because that's very, very important more than anything else, is having, having a, the prepared mindset to be able to uh, find it and provide solutions. Oh, that was Strategic Melon that said that. Uh, uh, supply solutions because there are no problems just an opportunity to to supply solutions and I think it's very very critical what you do as a individual one of the things that I definitely would say whatever it is that people are doing that you don't want to be a part of then don't do what they're doing do other things very very important because A lot of things are going to change, and I really want you to be in a position where you're able to decide what's in the best interest of yourself, your family, and our overall community from a sovereign, self-determining standpoint. And this is very, 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 very critical. So I want to touch on a couple of things, Um, the the diversion. A couple of things that we want to touch on in today's show is I want the the Fed uh, outlook, uh, with them d- dumping the time of year that it is, the overall military is, is uh, engagements that are being propped up and ready to ready to go, and the dis- displacement that the rest of the world is having uh, with the U.S. The U.S. is losing all of its uh, economic and geopolitical controls, and the only way that that can really be completely facilitated and actually come to a head is by them pushing back by force and that's what the system wants it wants to engage in a world war for depopulation and to 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 garnish more control over the everyday uh people of the world and they are going to definitely definitely do it why wouldn't they do it they've done it before in the past and it's been so beneficial to them so what are they going to change their colors now and not do it no only only the naive think that that is not possible from all of everything that's going on right now it tells you just the opposite that it is really really here in a defined way they're even telling you but most of many not you are not preparing for it. and i really want you to prepare for it so i want to talk about a little about it and then i want to talk about some opportunities that you should be to to engage in to protect yourself you have to do things work hard now work work extremely hard now and i'm not saying work for somebody extremely hard work for your overall benefit as much as you possibly can because it is going to provide a lot of leverage for you going forward so let's get into today's show i want to read this this uh oops this article and this came from the cleveland dot uh dot com and this was Okay, it appears that we may have lost Dave off the board. This is Scotty, your station manager. Uh, Let me do a quick check, but yes, it does appear that Dave is no longer on the board. He may be unaware that he has been cut off, so give me just a second as I have the system uh, dial out to him to reconnect him to the program. Hoping it's just... uh, 
he lost his signal so uh yes here yes we have him back so here we go all right dave we got you back sorry about that um and i didn't know i was i was off air so 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 please forgive me um i don't know what was uh last said but i want to read this article jump in the show um, and if you have any questions or comments, definitely give us a call, 866-510-9025, 866-510-9025. Okay, this is a very, very important article. And I and, and want to just rehash this. I'm not quite sure um, if you heard what I said. We have to be in the right position. So here we go. While the Trump administration is deciding whether to impose new uh, wage thresholds for overtime payment, a federal judge in Texas ruled against the federal, gov- against the federal government Thursday, saying it went too far with the 2016 rule that could have boosted more than 4 million workers' paychecks. Hey, check this out. This marks a a victory for 21 governors and state attorney generals, including Ohio. They said they were uh, filing suits in 2016 that the Department of Labor under President Obama exceeded its authority with new overtime rules. The Texas judge in November temporarily blocked a new overtime threshold, but the Obama administration appealed, and Trump's administration kept the appeal going. It goes on. The latest ruling uh, poses fresh questions for Trump as his labor secretary agreed that the stages that the states and business groups that said Obama's wage standard was too high, yet the new administration keeps legal fi- keep kept the legal fight going. Say Trump, like uh, like Obama, wanted the right to use salaries to determine whether a worker was eligible for overtime pay or exemption because of his or her administration administrative or managerial duties. In fact, the Trump administration has been moving forward with its own proposal rule on overtime pay in, in, in late July. Asked ask the public for input. More than 130, 135 comments have come in, including more than 3,500 from Ohio. Trump's Department of Labor has not responded to a question about the, the way forward, but but participants in the lawsuits, including the Chamber of Commerce of the United States, said they thought Trump would still, would still come out with his own overtime rules, making it possible for more workers to get time and a half pay. But it wouldn't be a generous, it wouldn't be as generous to workers or costly to employers as Obama wanted. Today's decision Move, move this down. Today's decision means small business, nonprofit, and other employers throughout the country, uh, throughout the economy, can be cer- uh, certain that the 2016 fa- salary thresholds will not result in significant new labor costs, causing most many disruptions in how work gets done. The Democrats were disheartened. Thomas Perez, who developed the rules as labor secretary under Obama, said the court's decision helped wealthy corporations and their Republican backs push the middle class families who who power our economy. Excuse me, punish. Um, Hold on one second. I got to take this uh, call. One second.
in 2008, the Black Talk Media Project launched the digital radio platform Black Talk Radio Network, the first such platform created to serve the black community specifically. Black Talk Radio Network has grown with a variety of radio hosts, digital radio stations, and podcasters. Web analytics say Black Talk Radio, the platform, has an online reach that ranks it among the top independent black media platforms in the world. All of this is possible back, because of financial contributions to the nonprofit Black Talk Media Project. If you love the work we do and the voices and perspectives we bring to you every day, make a donation today to ensure that Black Talk Radio is here in the future. Black Talk Radio is new black media for the new millennium. Okay, everyone, sorry about that. Um, well, that'll be the commercial break that we do at the top of the hour. So forgive me, forgive me. Uh, some some f- phone calls I just had had to take, so excuse me, I won't have any more of those. Um, so I had to take care of that. Some legal things um, that needed to be done immediately. Um, so I had to take care of that and can't get around that. Okay, so the article goes on, and it says, let's let's pick back up here. And it picked back up here. It says these workers are asking these workers aren't asking for handouts. They're working fifty to sixty hours a week, and they're not getting paid for it. Uh, the Perez, the now ch- chairman of the Democratic National Committee, said in a statement: "Ohio Democrats who had lobbied for the rule that's wrong. The overtime matter is best understood." It's best, it's best to understand it a step at a time. Here it goes. And then the article continue, continues. How, it's, how this started. Since the start of the Fair uh, Labor Standards Act of 1938, most employers had to pay a worker time and a half for his or her hourly wages if he or she worked more than 40 hours a week. But, those, but there were exceptions. Some of, some of the Department of Labor, Labor's rules and uh, guided Employers and carrying out the law, and it, uh, carrying out the law as it evolved over on overtime. The key to overtime rule, however, has always involved a worker's salary and his or her job duties. If an employer was, if an employee was salary and made over. Uh, $455 a week, a threshold set by the Department of Labor in 2004, in 2004, he or she was considered a professional, administrator, or an executive. That was a, a presumption that he or she did not qualify for overtime pay. Yet a worker could challenge that and could uh, challenge that and when, if, if he or she could show his job duties were barely administrative or a managerial, that he or she was really, in essence, a fry cook or assembly line worker. Obama said that the salary thresholds were came, which came to roughly $23,000 or $24,000 a year, was far too low. He continued... He, con- he contended that it allowed companies to shortchange low-paying workers by giving them, ass- them assistant management duties and ducking overtime obligations. So Obama in 2016 issued a rule more than doubling the salary threshold to $930 a week, the equivalent of $47,500 uh, 47 a year. The rule was supported, was supposed to start December the 1st, how it got to the courts. 21 states, 21 state, states sued Ob- the Obama administration over this, along with major big business, along with major business groups. They said Obama abused his authority by boosting the salary threshold so dramatically that he did so with a clear intent to raise workers' Move this down. To raise workers' take home pay rather than follow the structure of the 1938 law. But past presidents had ordered salary threshold hikes as allowed under the law, but the hike Obama chose 
they said, had no clear relationship with salary duties that typically define the work or managerial overtime calculation. Obama basically upended the salary and duties relationship that was envisioned in the Fair Labor Act. The lawsuit said that the U.S. District Court agreed issuing a preliminary injunction in late November to stop the rule from taking effect because he said that the states and business groups stood a strong chance of prevailing in a final ruling. The Obama administration appealed to the fifth court uh, of the, to the fifth U.S. Court of Appeals. Trump soon won the election and his Department of Labor decided to keep the appeal going. So they wanted to keep the appeal that Obama had going, the Trump, saying that that while it might not agree with Obama's salary threshold, it too might want to use salary as a determination someday. The Trump administration this summer even asked the public to weigh in on how it should set new overtime standards and what the salary and other criteria should be. Oh, y'all see where it's about to get? Article continues. Let me move it down. Sorry, my internet is jumping. The underlying legal question before the judge was still alive. However, although his ruling Thursday was unexpected, the appeal in the higher court was strictly on the judge's preliminary injunction to stop the Obama rule from kicking kicking in December the 1st, while there was overlap in the rationale for issuing that order. It did not prevent the court from continuing to consider the case underlying question. Was the Obama administration overtime rule an abuse authority. The judge decided uh, Tuesday granting a similar judgment or a win to the states and business groups. The judge noted that the Fair Labor Standard Act exempted from overtime pay any employee employed in a bona fide executive, administrative, or professional capacity. The government has always used a duty test to determine which worker qualified. And although the government also allowed a worker salary to be considered, until now it had always based the salary threshold on the low end of the administration or professional jobs. The judge wrote in his opinion that by more than doubling the threshold, Obama's rule would essentially make an employee's duty, functions, or tasks irrelevant if the employee's salary fell below the new minimum salary le- level. It would negate the question of a worker's duty, and Congress never intended that he said Trump has the next move so what does this mean for Trump and his likely overtime threshold possibly nothing I say if you think that is possibly nothing you are fooling yourself we'll lay it out in a minute and I would like to hear from you all as well it's about to end here we go oh man I shouldn't have moved it Uh Uh-oh, lost my place. Hold on. Stop moving, Internet. Okay, here we go. Trump has the next move. So what does this mean for Trump and his likely overtime threshold? Possibly nothing. While that may seem odd, the judge order only, only did one thing, specifically. Invalidated Obama's overtime rule. It does... Back on it. It did not say in, uh, it did not say another president cannot write his own rule, and it did not even say salary can never be used as a de- determination for who gets overtime pay. Rather, the judge objected to Obama's specific salary thresholds because of his size. He said. 
upended the duty component. The judge made this even clearer in his footnotes, saying he understood why that might be confusing over the right to use salary level tested. He said he was not making any judgment. It's still possible that the judge on the Fifth Circuit Court of Appeal could keep the earlier appeal alive. If they believe the broad question of authority still isn't adequately resolved, Trump also has the right to appeal Thursday's decision. But with the narrow way the judge constructs his opinion, Trump may have no reason to do so. Instead, the business community expects Trump will move ahead with his own rule. We look forward to working with the Department of Labor on a new rule to develop a more appropriate update to the salary threshold, Donahue said in a statement. Why did I read this and why is this so important? Ladies and gentlemen, I had said before they are going to bring corporations work off margins. And if they were making a profit margin, by leaving the country to go to other countries where they could pay less to their overall laborers or their enslavers. And now they're going to bring all of these businesses back here. That means that they're going to, this is a better, more bountiful, more fruitful opportunity, more prosperous opportunity to pay even less. And this is a part of it right here. The devil is always in the details. See, the thing is that, in order for you to go in a different direction, you got to change what you already have. The changes are going to be coming. There will be no overtime that will be paid. There will just be time and salary that's going to be paid. And at what, what bracket that they'll pay at is going to be determined by them. The sweatshops of the third world, third world, fourth world countries are coming here. Because remember, it didn't say anything about the salary was too much. And Trump will have the opportunity to appeal saying, yes, it should be changed off for salary. But guess what? I'm going to make the salary even lower. And I'm going to change the overall threshold in itself for overtime. Meaning the job requirements will be that you will have a job that will require you to work the regular hours of 12 to 14 hours or, 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 or whatever, 16 hour days and anything over that is over time and the pay at that ratio will be far, far less than the threshold that was challenged. See, these people have a deviant, deviant plan, and we talked about this for a while now. And I just want you to be properly positioned and, under, and, and have a firm grasp of what is happening. While we're looking at one thing, the system is creating a paradigm to enslave even further. And let me tell you something. There's going to be plenty of work, but nobody's going to get paid for it. And by way of the war and everything else, in order to fund a war, ladies and gentlemen, that means you got to have factories going on. And they say it's always a boom. No. You misunderstand that. It's a boom for those that control the war, not the ones that participate in it. It's a boom for those that orchestrate and direct the war. It's a booming for them, and it's a slaughter for everyone else. And I just don't see how we fall for these tricks other than we've been schooled. We've been schooled and indoctrinated to fall for them, to obey them, to conform to them, to even... Pledge your energy, your family, and your life to them. Whew. That's pimping.
And hey, Dave. Yeah, go ahead, Scotty. Hey, man. Um, so I know you've been busy lately. So I know you haven't been able to keep up like the news like you usually do, but. As you were speaking, again, uh, just stealing uh, people's labor, creating divisions between groups of people because you're making them fight each other for resources. But did did you hear about the largest tree uh, cutting service in the United States, Ashplund? I think it's how how you pronounce their name. They got the big green trucks like, like, Mm -hmm. you know, you know Mm -hmm. a John Deere tractor because it's green, but they had these big you know, uh, trucks that they have. And um, so they're like well known and they just paid the highest fine ever. I can't remember how many millions it was, but it wasn't equal to what they stole, but where they were hiring quote unquote illegals. Okay. You exploiting them as, as cheap slave labor, you know, as opposed to hiring Americans and then making other communities out there engage in, in the street market for survival, you know, in that trade and what have you that they have deemed illegal and put you into slavery for. But had you seen that story, man? Um, that's a major no. corporation. It seemed to me that somebody should have went to jail, but that's never the case. No, I didn't see that. And you know what was what was critical about that you have to always remember something that's that's critical remember the the under the the patriot act and in the ndaa the the executive orders that were 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 signed corporations and even under uh um the the um oh shoot what was the 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 treaty um where where no longer do corporations have to obey the law they actually write the law this is all being corporatized everything has always been corporatized but in war it's it's even magnified even more because the corporations become what the national security this is how they seize your land under national security this is how they seize your labor under national security this is how they take back what you own your ownership is repossessed. And, and what's, what's happening is we're seeing a bunch of companies that are positioning themselves this way. And they're going to have the, 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 the overall final say on everything because they will nationalize all of the resources. And this is where you will start to see they will create an economic crisis so deep that human liberty will be completely lost where people will say you know what I just want to work so I can eat and what happens when you get that that's when your the overall corporations are able to garnish and steal the most prized money that there is that's your energy that's directed by your free will you know, when we grew up in the neighborhoods, you would see someone that, that, that was a good ball player, and we all used to say, that's money. Because every single one of you are money. You have, an intrinsic, you have intrinsic value that's priceless. We don't cherish it. The system does. And because they are so addicted to uh, to galvanizing it and, and, and actually subjugating it, that they do everything in their powers to do it. They will even kill everybody you know on the block to maintain that. And they'll kill women, children, babies. They have no compassion. They love power. They know nothing about the power of love. Nothing about it. Now you're starting to have nationalization. They're starting to nationalize the critical infrastructure. And when they start to have that, that tells you that there's a major, major war paradigm that they're going to justify their actions to, to those that have already obeyed. Pretty soon, they won't have to make any excuses why they're doing, doing things because we'll find excuses for it. Well, you know we're in war with China. We've got to get ready for this war with China. And, and, you know, this person needs you. 
That person needs you. And I work for this company. And then this is why whenever, for those of you that have ever been in a major deployment, I know there's some people here that were in the military that was involved in a major deployment, Scotty being one and, and, and Brother Davis being another um, and just some other people, uh, some of you, you know who you are. What happened is in a major deployment, let's say for um, a desert, desert shield or, or desert storm, Oh, what was it? First Shield, Operation Desert Shield, and then Operation Desert Storm, and and then you had the different Afghan and everything else. Yeah, well, what's one of the things that they do? What do they nationalize? All of the corporations. You know why? Because the corporations are the ones that made the decision to start the war, to go into the war. This is where they'll take over plan, and we all think that's the overall American government, the American people coming together for their best interest. How foolish are we? This is the this is the best. This is the to me. This is one of the greatest forms of domestic violence you can ever be, where you make excuses for the abuser, and the abuser is not one nation. The whole system. And they're going to perpetuate this in such a way that basically telling you that there is going to be the sweatshops of the world are going to be centered here. China will have their sweatshops. Russia will have their sweatshops. Venezuela will have their sweatshops. North Korea, will, or the Koreas, there will be no North and South Korea, will just be the unified Korean nation will have their sweatshops here. And this country will have theirs here because the U.S. will be in receivership and everything will be claimed as a bounty for the reparations of the war that the U.S. caused and lost. Oh, and they'll still be in the United States. But then different states in this, in this country will, will actually become a part of other nations. They will, they will do what Cantalonia is doing right now. They will ratify their own independence. And this is where you have the untied states of America. The overall direction and the energy is gathering its momentum because it plans on sweeping the globe. Because the conflict is going to turn into confusion and the people will ask the very ones that have instigated the poison of, this, uh, uh, of destruction, they will ask them for relief. And they will be asking them for the relief from this standpoint, the dead asking for medicine. The dead asking for medicine. And I just want you and I to buffer and shelter ourselves from that as much as you possibly can. And being aware about that is very critical. Very critical. So listen, we got a, a caller in queue. Uh, let me get to this caller really quickly. Uh, let me go to this. I believe that's Brother Davis. I'm not quite sure. Our sister Davis. Uh, welcome caller out of 616 yeah, that's, 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 that's my people Welcome brother and sister Davis What's going on Good evening brother Dave How are you man It's always good to hear the voice of a friend Always good to hear the voice of a, of a friend And not only that A consultant uh, a, a brother And brother Davis Sister Davis Y'all mean so much to us Go ahead brother Davis what, Drop your piece with us add, I wanted to add to uh, show tonight in reference to the Colin Kaepernick, uh, Kaepernick situation. Remember, they're trying to make his issue about patriotism. The reason why they're trying to make their issue about patriotism is because they want a certain degree of loyalty to come out of the community. But what they're not telling you is that they finance the whole concept of patriotism at a professional event. Now, the sad part about it is that they changed the narrative so that people would be sympathetic to the narrative and not the truth. And the narrative is being set up so that when they do go to war, a certain percentage of the people are coming because of their patriotism. And it has nothing to do with patriotism. You have to understand the dynamics of how a corporation works. They want to maximize 
the usage of every dollar. So what did they do? They had the military, which they control, invest right. in the NFL in order for them to put a patriotist, uh, a patronizing event at every activity, and then they're going to demand your patriotism. See, what's so unique about this is that never before in history has anything like the Colin Kaepernick situation arose on such a world platform. And what we have to understand is that right now they're dropping money big time to make this go away. Why do I say that? Because right now they're in major negotiations with about five or six TV channels for NFL rights. And if nobody's watching the NFL, they get less money. So what they're going to try to do is say, well, listen to the players. We'll give you more money if you stop this so that we can make money on the negotiation. And that's what that whole Dallas Cowboy thing was about. And make no mistake, the power in the player would be to be able to go out and strike behind it. If they go out on strike behind this, they will leverage themselves financially for the rest of their lives. But if they sell out, they sell us all out. I just wanted to add that, Brother Dave. Excellent show as usual. Brother Davis, thank you. Thank you for, for your excellent interpretation uh, and view on it all. And, you know, um, one of the things I want to say about this, this whole thing, and it's, you know, it's a different method with the same objective. And I mean that from this standpoint. And I want to go back to the domestic violence. Just think about domestic violence. Let's say there's a couple, and in that, within that home, there's, there is one physical abuser, a mental abuser, and that would be the, the actual uh, uh, aggravator of, or the, the perpetrator of the domestic violence. And then there's the victim. What does the perpetrator of domestic violence always say? that I beat you in love and you want to complain. I beat you in love. This is, this is an old playbook. This is something that they use all the time, but they do it in different ways and by different means. But the objective is the same, but the method is different. Germany did this. They said it was, you had to be patriotic to Germany against other people. This is no different. This is the corporate play. This is the corporate play before there is the overall divergence. And the one that's caught up in it is that is the nation that the world will go against because then they will become even more tyrannical and more tyrannical. Do you see where this is leading? The third right of Nazi Germany was begotten by manifest destiny. The fourth and fifth right of the Nazis is here now and is still meant begotten by manifest destiny. The abuser will always say, I beat you in, because I love you. And the victim stays because they buy into that, yes, you do love me. And I don't want anybody on the outside causing problems for us. Do you see where this is all going while the rest of the world is looking and say that we have a lunatic nation on our hands? And if we allow them to continue to go in, this is why you have the celebrity figurehead that you have right now. This is why there's the question of the sanity. This is why there's the question of this and that. Do you see what they're really doing? They're setting the world up for depopulation and for further control. While we're focusing on something that is a diversion and we don't see where the real attack is coming from. And when you don't see where the real attack is coming from, you won't have the appropriate response to rebuff it. You won't have the sufficient defense against it. Your immunity will be down to that virus. And then the cancer will grow until it eats itself to death. Or it eats its host to death. Cancer is one of the few things that destroys itself 
by destroying its host because it is an evil energy. The evil energy. And it's being played out. And if we know those things, then we won't be easily manipulated by that. And how do you, what, what is the greatest uh, solution to that? Is when they're trying to manipulate, manipulate you one way, give them no energy. And they will, have, they will have no propellant. They will have no movement. Establish your own. Create what's necessary for you. That way your defenses against everything will even be, you will have the defenses for the appropriate psyops. Don't make yourself the easy mark, the easy target. And this is an agenda that has worked so many so so well before in the past is because they've actually schooled everyone to be what? The perfect victim. So we got another caller in queue. Wanna go to this caller? It's my man Roz. Roz, what's going on? Go ahead, brother. Sound off. Peace and much love to you, Brother Dave. Um, Brother Dave, it's brilliant, brilliant uh, assessment in addition to the show. Brother Scotty, all the other calls and listeners, Brother Bragg, Jerry, everybody. Our uh, uh, strategic <laughs> melanin. Oh, I can't remember all the names anymore. The family's just getting so Man, you dangerous. do well with it, um, you, 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 you. You always put it down. Go ahead, man. <laughs> now, it's interesting that he brought up Colin Kaepernick because last week Thomas talked about um, – the potential for the NFL to mandate that all players stand for the national anthem, just make it a, a, a blanket rule. And um, this really makes sense because I saw an article I posted on BTR Community regarding that, that they, it looks like they might be considering just mandating that all the players stand. Now, when I was thinking about it, I just saw a documentary, the 10-part documentary on the Vietnam War. And thinking of what Brother Davis so brilliantly elucidated, what really hits me is they can't have another Vietnam. They can't have people here rioting against what they're doing overseas because the vast majority of the military will be overseas. And who do they use to quell domestic violence when there are uprisings in this country? The National Guard, the military. So ultimately, um, this, is, this is their avoidance of another Vietnam through facilitating this mass patriotism, which I just call... Um, the spreading, the 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 the, the vector like spreading of uh, of propaganda towards nationalism, and really what it is is to prevent them from having to go overseas and do whatever they're doing there, and then have massive uprisings here. They need good, docile slaves, like you said, for the for the FEMA camps and all the other concentration camps that they're setting up. So in order to avoid that, they have to have dumb, docile people. So you have the whole heroin epidemic and who is that affecting now right now the majority of the population white people so as to keep this vast majority dumbed down and stupefied but also highly patri patriotic so that they can send their children overseas without any any arguments to, to die off while their parents are here being slaves and they can't have that sort of violence now it's funny i'm not a big tv it's watcher starved. but <laughs> Yep, and it's and, funny because... And they're going to starve the parents show. here. Go ahead, Brian. Absolutely. Oh, no problem, no problem. And there's a new show, there's a new season of a show called Mr. Robot, which speaks to everything you're talking about. The new season starts off with... The whole thing is about this company called E Corp, and E Corp is the largest corporation on the planet, and they basically own the United States. There is no government. And in the, the actual um, first episode there's an announcement made where there, they say there is no government, there's only the corporation and what the corporation wants. And the main character is trying to destroy the corporation by destroying the, um, the records that it has of the global debt, because this, co this particular company has the, the global debt of everyone, all of the, the, the basically the people, not, not, the, not the, uh, the, the people who run the corporations, but the people themselves, like you're talking about, the slaves. So he's attempting to wipe out all global debt through their electronic currency and all this other stuff. And it's a really deep show, but if you, if you watch it, it literally, it, to me, it's, it's, it's elucidating for me what's to come here very quickly. And the fact that we're going to have a wake-up call in regards to the fact that this 
is not a, a government, but this is actually a corporation. And I think, like, like I said, they put a lot of the truth on these shows so that people um, don't know, I mean, think that it's entertainment. So when it really happens, they, they're caught by surprise because they're trained to think that it's entertainment. And um, lastly, there was just something, this is a brief piece that I read out of, uh, read on my show before, but I think it goes perfectly with the, the premise of this program. Um, ultimately, uh, I'm going to read it briefly. It's from Negroes and Other Essays. It's on page 37. It says, if the same, the insane, excuse me, if the insane can convince the same that insanity is sanity, then the same majority become insane. And insanity then becomes universal and comes to be seen as sanity. Those individuals or groups who dare to hold on to their original sanity become universally depicted as the truly insane or backward, Colin Kaepernick. And those who are the carriers of the, the original insanity become depicted, universally depicted as truly sane or modern, i.e. Trump. Indeed, Europeans are a minority, and they currently represent less than 10% of the world's population. Their numbers are steadily shrinking to an estimated 3% by the year 2073. I think that's happening a lot faster than that. But ultimately, it's speaking about what you're talking about, this propaganda towards insanity. And ultimately, um, matter of fact, I missed a part of it. Let me just get this last paragraph. Matter of fact, it's the paragraph before the paragraph I read. It says, if European culture is insanity, then at a fundamental level, that at the fundamental level that humans define and perceive reality, we as Africans and people of color have a very serious problem. If a cultural minority becomes the power majority, and this minority through military, media, and religious might force the majority cultures to adopt this culture as their own, then insanity becomes the norm and is redefined as sanity. Accepting another re another's reality as your reality makes their reality yours. If the global majority is right, then Europeans are wrong. How dare they stand in judgment? If the vast majority of people on the planet eat insects high in protein content as a regular daily part of their diet, which is true, but Westerners don't, who is the oddball? And then it says, unfortunately, as is the case with European cultural imperialism, if in the insane can invent excuse me, can convince the same that insanity is sanity, then the, major the same majority become insane and insanity becomes universal and comes to be seen as sanity. Those individuals or groups who dare to hold on to their original sanity become universally depicted as the truly insane or backward, and those who are carriers of the original insanity become universally depicted as the truly sane or modern. So that's what we're watching all over again. And like I said, to me, this is kind of just the Vietnam War redux, just updated, much more deadly, and the propaganda for mind control is on a level that's unprecedented in history. And I wanted to know if you also got the article that I sent you about uh, Bitcoin and them creating a, a plastic currency, almost like a credit card for Bitcoin. Now, it came out this weekend, and I posted it on BTR, and I, um, I tagged you in it, but I just uh, also texted it to you not too long ago, so I don't know if you got to look at it, but I did send it. And no, I, you, I, I didn't. Okay. No, 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 Raj, you, 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 you're, you're perfect, uh, Raj. No, 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 but no, I didn't see it, um, but I will check it out. Uh, what was it? Is it BitPay? Is it BitPay or is it 10X? Um, the article itself is from the street.com. Um, Bitcoin, I'll check it out. plastic, crypto de debit cards for real. That's the title of the article. Yeah. Okay, I'll check yeah, it definitely out. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Definitely, definitely. You know, Raz, thank you. Hold on, Raz. Uh, let me let me just. It's, in this, there is multifaceted attacks that are happening, and diversion is greater than a nuclear bomb. Psyops is greater greater than anything that uh, uh, the the uh, CERN could produce at the Large Hydron Collider or at ITER when they try to duplicate the sun. And it's so powerful because they realize the energy is of you. So the overall, there's massive propaganda to keep borders that men create. You think about what are borders? Borders are prisons. Borders are prisons. And the best way to make the prisoner accept their prison sentence is to tell them that they're free. 
You don't want to go over there because they're not like you and I. You don't want to have anything. That's your enemy. See, this is what they do while they're aggravating and instigating that overall emotional response to everything. This beast has perfected, but they're still flawed. You know, there's going to be a multi-level engagement that we're going to see. I saw a, and I just want to touch on it real quickly with you all. I saw a movie trailer as I'm trying to go to sleep last night. And all I could do was go, mm, mm, mm. The movie trailer is Geostorm. And it's supposed to come out the 20th. What are they telling you? Remember when I said that they're going to have land hurricanes? Well, they have a clip that we played right here on Tando Radio Show. With LBJ, the, the one that, that assisted in the overall. Well, they all are part of it. LBJ, there was first Kennedy on September the 25th of uh, 1961, 19, uh, give a speech about weather modification. Then there was a graduation speech that LBJ had, and there's actually one of the clips inside of Geostorm. Look at the trailers. What are they telling you? They equally hate you all, and they're going to use everything against us. So what is it that we should be doing? We, ne- we should definitely be aware of these things, aware of what is being planned and covert and secret. This is why their meetings are secret. This is why they had top secret this and top secret that. The top secretness is not for them. Their, their overall agencies of spies know everything that's going on, but how much do you know what's going on? So who's the real target and who's the real victim? Why is this so significant? It's so significant because we continue to do what we did yesterday, which makes us vulnerable today, tomorrow, and furthermore in the future. There is an example that we should take there's an example that we should take of unifying ourselves to create our own solutions create our own environments that bring about our prosperity, that create our own collaboration that magnify our overall purpose. Without that, we continue to be the followers of the sociopaths and psychopaths to our our own demise. So I would say to you, Who's really sociopathic and who's really psychopathic? The victim is. The one that we call sociopathic and and psychopathic is an opportunist. Is an opportunist. Check out this, the movie trailer for Geostorm. G E O. S T O R M. It's um telling you what's planned. It's a war. And if we can start to do things differently than what we've done before, let's look at what we've done before. If we've done that before, don't do it. One of the things that we really haven't done is we haven't had an asymmetrical, silent approach to do what? Incrementally invoke our overall control of things. You can't just come out and think that you're going to fight Floyd Mayweather and beat him and you've never boxed in your life. There's a quiet, a quiet path, 
a silent movement that needs to be done among the people where they have collective prudence among themselves and they slowly build this uh, infrastructure that is unshakable around that. And that, ladies and gentlemen, requires great energy. Let me tell you one thing, and I'm not talking about the poor of heart. Generally, the poor stay impoverished. I'm not talking about monetarily. The poor stays impoverished because they don't know how rich their energy is that they refuse to use. And when we refuse to use the energy properly, we do lose our prosperity for generations set forth. We have to galvanize ourselves individually in small settings, you and your family, you and your neighbor, you and that person that you just met. There has to be a language that we that you speak and establish. There has to be a natural barrier to those that don't resonate that way. Because when you have a natural barrier, then it does what? It actually points out the imposter. There's a way in which we need to start to speak. There's a grimoire and a spirit that we need to start to speak with and give energy to it. And not cast it as a spell, but cast it, but but set it forth, release it as a direction, as a path. And I know the system has always taught us that if it's not a big lottery hitting and a big lottery winning, then why are you doing it? That's the only game that's in town. That's because they don't they want you to continue to surrender your prosperity to keep you in poverty I don't want to do that I know you that listen to Tando radio show don't want to do it because the system now you know their language you know how committed they are to it all just don't allow yourself to be manipulated by it not necessary. There are things that you definitely can do. We're getting ready to go to a commercial break. I see my man Thomas in queue. Uh, we'll go to you right after the commercial break, uh, Thomas, and then want to talk about uh, real quickly um, you being thoroughly prepared for the switch changing and then some, some of the things that you should be thinking about acquiring and thinking about doing. Where's the solution? The solution has always, always been where it has been treasured inside the box of you. You're listening to Tando Radio Show brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. We'll be right back after this quick commercial break. Talk Radio, your choice for digital black radio. New black media for the new millennium. Okay, welcome back everyone to Tando Radio Show brought to you by Black Talk Radio Network. If you'd like to get in on the conversation, give us a call 866-510-9025. It's going to be the last 30 minutes of the show. Um, definitely want to go to our callers in queue and then I want to bring up really quickly 
um, some things that you possibly should be um, on guard and prepared for economically and um, militarily confrontation wise so that you will not be caught off guard and then um, some of the things that you should may want to uh, start doing um, right away some of the solutions because they're there with you so let me go to my man Thomas that's in NYC to my man Thomas welcome Thomas to Tando Radio Show what's going on brother how you doing Peace, Dave. How you doing, boy? Peace, Peter, brother. How you feeling? I'm okay, man. I'm all right. Um, Adam, just want to say, man, you see this um plague outbreak in uh, Madagascar? No, no. Yeah, I, I've, been, I've been off the grid for, for a minute. Uh, uh, go ahead, tell us about it, Thomas. Um, well, yeah. I just started reading on it. It, it just uh, they showed some pictures of the people and. Looks like they got leprosy. It's, it's terrible. And I said, man, I hope they can, um, you know, cure it and isolate it, you know, before that spreads. Um, and um, man, I saw this um, the, man, I saw one of the worst movies ever yesterday. I'm like, I'm still, I'm still traumatized from watching it. I saw. Um, yeah, I was about to birds. ask you. I was about to ask. I said, you're all right, Thomas. You sound different. What, what's, what's going on? Oh uh, yeah, man! I saw the birth of the nation, the the yeah. Lake Parker one. Oh, terrible, yeah. terrible, terrible movie, man! I was, I was like, ugh. I thought that if you couldn't get worse than twelve years of slavery, you did. It was just um, traumatized, man. Um, I'm still seeing the people hanging. Um, uh, I wanted to say, um, I, I, I think I came on your show before, and I said uh, that. The only play these people have is to go into um, North Korea slash China. Um, and <laughs> I, I even see now, now um, you know, these people are expert de- deceivers. Um, now mm-hmm. they're spinning Iran, and they're saying that Iran are the people making the nuclear weapons for North Korea, even though they don't have any of their own. And I said, see, this is their ploy. This is their, Iran is their out. If they, they're either going into um, North Korea and they're going to, um, as I would say, um, you know, grab their, you know, kahunas and, and go in there, or they're going to take the easy way out and go into Iran. I don't know if you see the same thing. But um, that's why um, he gave mm-hmm. Iran pretty much 60 days. And in 60 days, they come up with some made-up story. Or um, they're going to go into um, North Korea. I did see that report you said earlier about the Navy SEALs going in there, and I thought that was very interesting. So um, I'm with my mom, brother. Thank you, man. Man, much, much. Always, always treasure your your insight and in what you're seeing. Yeah, you know, I think that th- th- there's a couple of things. Whenever you're battling, and this is all the show. This is the this is the war game, okay? In in, in the military, you'll have. And in, in for those of you that have been in, you you know, it's war games. Well, war itself is a game, and and, and they're just uh, uh, strategized and they're just operated under under different rules. But it's 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 a game. It's still a game. Uh, and in, in my opinion, I I think that you're seeing all of the perfect destabilization programs from Iran to Venezuela, which um, is really a direct target because they're a heavy asset uh, country that's near. And that will play where the rest of the world would say, wait a minute, we know why you invaded them for the, you see the whole situation is rigged so that the world will see America as the pariah, but they won't see the system as the create as the biological engineer of destruction and this is you know it it amazes me how they stick to generational time frames they'll have where the overall slaves will have a boom then they'll have a minor, a, a small bus, a major bus, and then they'll have a major war to kill off. And it's all set up generational because it gives them time to educate the generations ahead of what they're going to do. 
And you'll be surprised that you'll be surprised. Go back and look at really, really old commercials and really, really old. You'll see some of the same things that you see today. Just under a different format. Same thing. And I think the next generation, there there will be more, uh, biology will be more important. And it, it will it will be where <clears throat> the overall technology will continue to explode to where the technology will go back to doing what? There will be no technology at all. It's a full circle. And they make us think that time only started when they said go. The school trains us to think that time only started when the book said go. Man, that puts us in a real bad position of disadvantage. We got another caller in queue. Definitely want to um, get this brother on. Uh, brother Bragg, Brother Bragg, what say you? Peace, peace. A- peace, 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 Brother Bragg. I-, I don't like to be the voice of gloom and doom, but check this out, man. We know that we yes, got be brother Bragg. nations, peacekeeping forces, already got boots <laughs> on the ground here in America, multinational forces. So these people from all different countries that have different cultures and whatnot come to your country to please you. Now, you don't have to believe me, but remember, they've always talked about Pazi Kamatadis. Now, remember all these orders, non-military combatants. It's a whole bunch of presidential orders. You need to sit down and go right down that line. Everything he told you, he told you consistently, pinpointed, they're going to come. If if it ever happens, if they go into this martial law, we already have the Mason Power War Power Act. Remember that we've been under that since Lincoln, but that's another story. All right, so these people already got this stuff in play. What you have to do is be aware of it. Remember this: right now, you all broke the law. You read the book. She's not supposed to read, but she's scaring the hell out of them. You find out who you are. You stand up and say, "Hey, <laughs> hey, hey!" We are all from Africa. It's scaring the shit out of them. Understand what's going on. And the more you know, the more scared they get. You can see. The truth is the truth, and you can't stand a lot. Now, this country was founded on bloodshed, our blood. They came to your home and they took your land. Then they miseducated you and your children. Now, we, we're in a dimensional ship. The paradigm is opening wide up. Everything that was here right. is becoming right before you. All you got to do is apply yourself. And if you keep, if you're eating right and whatnot, you know, man, things that, man, I'm done because I'm not a preacher. I'm just talking to my people because... <laughs> My job is to uplift and plant seeds. I've done my job. Peace. Yes, yes, you have. You've done your job. It's so, so true. Brother Rags, right? If we're eating right and we're doing our things and, and there is, if you really listen to, to, to everyone here, uh, they, they realize the opportunity for us is so great, so absolutely great. And even in the midst of their fear-mongering from wars and everything else, um, and then when you pick, point out, yo, they're doing some stuff, people look at you, why are you fear mongering? Well, because you, you, you a coward. you scared to look at the truth for what it is because you're afraid it might hurt you. But see, if you're prepared and never scared. Yeah, go, ahead, go ahead, brother. Right? Just remember this. This is a mental war. Don't let them draw you into a physical war. This is where, look, Whoa. when the eagle kills the snake, right. the eagle comes down, he grabs the snake up off the ground, he takes him up into the air. He doesn't fight that war, he lets him fly. He knows he can't fly like an eagle, so he's going to come get him once he dies. Remember, it's a mental war. Prepare yourself mental and spiritually. Say it. Watch what you put in your mouth. All this GMO stuff is to alter your being, your very physical being. I'm talking about alter what you made of. So what you eat is what you are. And just remember this. When you eat fearful animals, you become a fearful human. Peace. I'm done. Because I'm not a person. And I'm you not know, want anybody. I'm just... No, I love it, Brother Braggs, because if you, if from, from just hearing one of the things that, I, that resonated with me is, is, is combining what Thomas talks about, artificial intelligence. Artificial intelligence. By GMO food means that your intelligence is artificially derived by something that's not sustainable. I think Sister Davis is in queue. Let me go to Sister Davis real quick. Is that brother or Sister Davis that uh, wanted to jump back in? Hey, uh, brother, this is Brother Davis. You know, this is yes. the perfect time for me to talk about Wednesday's show. Because what people don't understand 
that this is far beyond our uh, capacity to think. Where we are right now is far beyond our capacity to reason. And the reason is because they are breaking and reconstructing universal law. That's why eating and, and how we think and what we do all plays a role. And on Wednesday's show, I'm going to show you from the way you your habits are, how you have been deconstructed to be broken. And the reason being is because if you reconstruct yourself, you are greater because now you're starting to apply some natural things. Brother Bragg just mentioned eating. Perfect example. Uh, when they re deconstructed you, they gave you habits that you didn't have. Smoking was not a habit that was endured for the health of the body. It was endured by choice. Why? Because they gave you power over your natural will to be able to lie to yourself about the will of your health. Now, there's a, there's a reason for all of this, but it all comes together on Wednesday night show. If you tune in, you're going to see how universal law brings balance and order and the, yes. this, the deconstruction, which is what you see if you look at every aspect. Perfect example is Monsanto's making a seed to do what natural seeds do by themselves. But Monsanto's does not have the equivalence of a natural seed. They have synthetic design, which is never going to equal the creator's pattern. So literally what they're doing is attacking the universal laws by keeping us closed, keeping our minds closed to the reality of what's going on. And I'm going to start with just the thought process and, and um, indoctrination school. We're going to move into the music, then we're going to move into the social, then we're going to move into the scientific. Because they didn't do one way. They reconstructed, they deconstructed on every level, because as you reconstruct, yes. you're going to see how these pieces play a great role. And for you young people, I really want you to hear the aspect of the, re the reconstruction of healthy interaction with the soul self and the mind self. Because see, a lot of people fail to realize, they say, well, I listen to rap music and it's not a problem. But it is a problem, because if you remember, the original rap was positive. When it went negative, it literally brought an imbalance to the thought process that takes a biochemical transaction in your body and does not allow you to make decisions based on your knowledge. It forces you to make the decisions based on how you might feel, what the music's doing to you. And that's not even counting the content of the words. The words that literally transform us when we was coming up, singing love songs and that sort of thing, bringing harmony to our communities, that is all out the window with this new age rap, the so-called gangster stuff. So we have to take our time, and I'm going to reconstruct this to show you why the balance was so important in the beginning, because that's what led to the harmony. This stuff now is not harmony. This what you see right now is what they call agitation, and in a state of agitation, you lose control. I just wanted to add that, brother, because everything, every, all the well, conversation was going in that direction. Hey, brother, well, don't... Yeah. Can yeah, I just hey, right. one thing? Remember this. Yeah, of these course. Words speak, these words we speak are spells. So these young brothers, unbeknownst, with the help of Hollywood, started speaking the spell of death on our community with the words they, they went because they didn't know the words had the power that they did. Remember, colors, colors. All of a sudden, everybody is wearing colors in different parts of the United States. California, from there, jumped to New York. From New York to other little small, you know, back, back road towns. So now you got people who look melanated people who should be brothers killing each other and I just saw a thing the other day with this little young cat a little young rapper he's dressing up like Chucky he talking about he gonna chop up these ninjas and man just the, the language you know what I'm saying I don't, I don't use these words anymore man listen the words we speak man it's no joke when you start get into that epistemology dictionary get deep into it you're gonna see queen queen is like a don't use that anymore queen is like a a prostitute but, but you got to remember where it came from. These words don't come from us. These words are spells. It's spelling. Mm. It's cursive. And these words have power. And I try to tell young people, when you plug your head into them, them headphones, you let that nonsense float through your brain, you're done. You're, you're part of the program now. That's all I had to say, Dave.
Peace, peace. Yeah, the, the, there's a peace, peace. There's a, a path to becoming from becoming synthetic, from natural to synthetic, and it's not just uh, one that is uh, metallic, metallically done. There's an inducement, and, and yeah, and the, one sec, the, and it, there's an inducement by toxic by toxin toxin material septic material um and there is a process that changes your whole body function you can have a body part that's not working in its right manner and then now getting a foreign substance or a substitute substance it is now no longer natural it is synthetic in nature go ahead thomas we got uh, uh two minutes we got to get ready to get out of here go ahead thomas um, yeah, oh, um, Scotty okay. does. Scotty deals with the uh, abolitionism thing, and um, you know, let's not forget that those uh, the prisons is big money, and uh, the largest shareholders for um, the private prison stocks is the owners of the entertainment industry. So there's incentive to have the lyrics and things come out the way they do. Um, they they making big money off of it. At the end of the day, they know that's gonna put people right into a um, a prison type situation. Um, so you know, just keep that in mind. Also, uh, I was talking yesterday to people in the UK, and um, they they've been really downplaying their their hurricane. It's not a good idea. <laughs> you know, this is gonna be serious because that's gonna be cold water coming in here. Um, but however, mm -hmm. they have another one coming on Friday. Uh, looks like on the twentieth, that's going to go that way. And I want to make a prediction: um, November seventeenth or November twenty fifth. I expect that we're going to get um, somewhere. It's going to be a big one. The last hurricane of the season is listed as Whitney, and um, I just found it, it very ironic that so those are the days that Whitney's Bobby um, Bodyguard movie came out on the twenty fifth, and the soundtrack on the seventeenth. So I would, wouldn't be surprised if one hit one those one of those two days that have a King Whitney, and I'll meet my line, peace. Peace, peace. Well, so, you know, one of the things that Thomas said that was, he said the prison industrial complex makes big money. Now, I want you to, to think about that for a minute, but not from what you've been told, but what your spirit tells you. The, 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 industrial, the prison industrial complex makes big money. What is money? It's not cash, ladies and gentlemen. Big money is your energy. Money is something that's defined that has intrinsic value. They're making big money. I that got a big question, money is Dave. you. Scotty? Yeah. What's the prison industrial complex? What is that? Cause that that's a made up thing, you know. It is it's not a prison industrial complex. It makes it sound like it's something new. That is slavery. It's one word. It's slavery. Slavery always been profitable. It's all about stealing the individual's energy and converting it yep. into something else of intrinsic value. So the prison industrial complex is is this liberal term they come up with this catchphrase and it doesn't convey to the person the seriousness of what's going on in my opinion but I just call it slavery I, I would agree yeah, yeah that's a politically correct way to say it right I would I would definitely definitely agree Scotty well well said okay everyone get ready to, to go we got melanated root coming up uh, right after so stand by for that I just want to say much love much respect for you all uh, the the overall program um, is going to be is doing very very well should be uh, should be coming uh, to you all very soon I'll let you know when so it's never goodbye as always I'll see you later and before you ask for a fortune make sure to give one away Brother Bragg, if you'd be so kind and chime us out, everybody sit around for Melanated Root. We'll talk to you soon. Peace, peace. Much love, much respect. We'll talk to you. Peace. Peace.
gold dinar would have had serious consequences for the world financial system, but may also have empowered the people of Africa, something black activists say the US wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. We're slicing cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. We're slicing cake. Say the US wants to avoid at all costs. Gaddafi didn't give up. In the months leading up to the military intervention, he called on African and Muslim nations to join together to create this new currency that would rival the dollar and euro. They would sell oil and other resources around the world only for gold dinars. It's an idea that would shift the economic balance of the world. Countries' wealth would depend on how much gold they have, not how many dollars they trade. And Libya has 144 tons of gold.